Hello everybody, Shalashoska here with another first impressions video for you. Alright, so for this video I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. This is going to be a pre-recorded first impressions video of the playable alpha for a game called Invisible Fist, which was kindly given to me by the game's developer. Um, it's still in the early stages of development, but the devs are looking for testers, so if you're interested in checking it out, I will leave the links to the Steam page and the Discord server in the description below the video, as I usually do with the games that I review. So go ahead, check that out, and maybe you can have a chance to be part of development, which is always nice. So, Invisible Fist. Invisible Fist is a card game wherein you play one of three characters who are battling the invisible hand of the market. As you might expect from the name of the game, uh, it's a game that's inspired by the rising inequality of the world and late-stage capitalism. Uh, but it's also a comedic game, so don't expect it to take itself too seriously. I mean, you are quite literally battling a giant invisible fist, as, you know, the name of the game implies, so I think at this point it's safe to say that it's no longer really a metaphor you're dealing with. Alright, so the game plays simply enough. You get three characters to choose from, either a self-made multi-billionaire, a middle-class university student, or an electronics factory worker. In the alpha, you can only play as the billionaire right now, which, according to the developer, is, as you might expect, the game's easy mode. If that's the case, I can only assume that the college student would be normal, and the factory worker would be hard. The game itself is a straightforward enough affair. You're doing battle with a giant invisible fist, and the two of you play cards against one another in an attempt to either whittle down the other's health to zero, or to survive until the end of the fight. Uh, each fight consists of seven rounds, with each round representing a single day of the week. You have up to 24 hours worth of points that you can play on a turn, which, you know, represents a day in the week, and different cards cost different amounts of time. So, like, sleeping will cost you 9 hours out of those 24 you have in the day, and writing code will cost you 12 hours, things like that. You've also got a stress meter that you need to pay attention to, since some of the cards that you play will actually cause your stress to rise. There are three main categories of cards that you can play and they are work cards, which basically deal damage to the fist and cause your stress to rise. You have relax cards, which actually will drop your stress, and you have sleep cards, which heal your health. Uh, you've also got special cards that you can unlock over the course of the game, and these are those kind of, you know, typical power cards that you get in board games that have a whole range of effects across the board. So things like when you activate a special card, it will play the next card you activate two times in a row and double all the costs and double damage, double the time cost, etc. Or there's a card that will automatically lock three of your cards, meaning you can't play them, but it will deal 20 damage right off the bat to the enemy. Things like that. There's a whole slew of them. So one thing I will say in the game's favor is that it's very easy to pick up and play. In this build, there actually isn't a tutorial mode, which would usually be a problem when you're learning how to play a card game, but the game is rules light enough that learning how to play actually isn't very difficult at all, and I was able to jump in like right away and get a grasp of what's happening. Uh, it has some good feedback as well, like good visual feedback and good, uh, good uh, prompts on all the cards, good tool tips to explain exactly what it is you're doing and all any gaps that are left over aren't too bad to plug in. It's easy to get a grasp of what you need and the mechanic, how the mechanics affect one another. Here's the rub though, so I didn't find this game to be all that engaging. Now, normally I really, really dig card games and deck building games. The thing about Invisible Fist is that there really isn't much in the way of tactical depth. I know that I'm playing in alpha, and I know that I'm playing the game's easy mode, I'm aware of that, and I would actually kind of be curious to see how much of this will change with the other decks based on those other characters, but ultimately the game boils down to very simple resource management. Just keep an eye on your health and stress, and make sure to play cards that increase those numbers as you fight towards the end of the week. It's made even easier by the fact that you don't actually have to defeat the hand in order to progress. There's like a nominal story mode in there, and I have no idea how much this is affected by your relative successes and failures, but in my playthrough, I think I defeated the hand maybe like half the time, 
and I still got the ending which was stated in that character's goal. He wanted to release the software and it was a successful launch despite the fact that I only got like maybe half of the challenge stars at the top of the screen. So basically from like what I'm gathering is all you really need to do is survive and you'll end up winning in a weird way. I also found that there's a real lack of variety with the game. Um, again, I know that it's an alpha. Um, but even like in terms of mechanics, like you don't shuffle your deck and draw your cards randomly like you'd expect in a card game. Instead, you always have all of your deck available, and the only times when it's not available is if that card happens to be locked because of the effect of one of your opponent's cards. Um, so either you can run out of points at the end of the round, or the cards are locked, and that, those are the, really the only two things that are preventing you from playing any of your cards. So, at the end of every stage, you get to select a new card to add to your deck. You have a choice of three different things. Um, so, you, there is some deck building, but again, like when you go into a new round, everything's available. So, you just kind of pick and choose. And it's really easy to get into these patterns that you just know, okay, like, I could do a lot of damage early rounds, spend a few rounds to, like, heal up. Random things might happen, but it's not too hard to work around those. There are social events that pop up throughout the fight, and they seemingly give you more bonus cards at the expense of taking some of those time points away from that particular day, which means you can play fewer cards. And, like I said, every fight only has seven rounds total, so at the end of those seven rounds, if you have more health than the Invisible Hand, you'll win, but you won't get a three-star rating. Ultimately, it's a really static affair, especially because, like I said, you don't run out of health by the end of the round, you still win and you move on with your life. So, ultimately, Invisible Fist, it's not really a game for me. I like the idea of it, at least as much as it's true for the alpha state that it's in, there really isn't all that much that would make me want to go back. Mechanics are paired up nicely with the game's theme, but it just lacks so much depth that, quite honestly, it's a bit of a bore. And that theme isn't enough to interest me, not in the way it's presented at least. So yeah, that's Invisible Fist, uh, currently in alpha. If you're interested in helping test the game, they are currently looking for testers. Or if you have any suggestions on feedback or development, please check out the links in the description of the video. Uh, hopefully, the game will grow and add more content to it that will make it more engaging, but as it is now on the version that I played, there just isn't enough for me to, you know, sit down and enjoy it, and the gameplay loop is a little too basic. Right, so, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.